China turn Russia into an aircraft carrier superpower. The Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov has entered what is expected to be a substantial refit. Its performance in a recent deployment off Syria was not adequate, in addition to engine problems. It suffered flight deck issues that contributed to the loss of two fighters, a substantial portion of its flight group. The readiness of Kuznetsov has suffered across its entire career, in large part due to a lack of experience and maintenance funding. As it is already nearly 30 years old, it is unclear how much more service the Russian Navy can wring from the hull. Despite occasional claims that a new carrier will be laid down soon, serious design work has yet to begin. Moreover, in a time of defense austerity, Russia seems to be de-emphasizing its surface fleet. It is not at all clear that Russia could build an aircraft carrier in a reasonable time frame even if it wanted to. But, what if Russia decided to look elsewhere, as more than a few countries have done in the past? What if Russia decided to purchase an aircraft carrier from China? Chinese shipbuilding is world-beating. Russian shipbuilding is, at least as far as large surface ships are concerned, a complete mess. In the last decade and a half, Russia has largely reconstituted its ability to build but, the problem is exacerbated by the loss of Ukraine. All four Kiev class carriers were built in Ukraine, as were the two Kuznetsov class ships. Ukraine gained its independence with the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and while relations between the two countries remained cordial enough to continue defense industrial cooperation until 2014, Chinese shipbuilding, on the other hand, has made tremendous strides over the past decade. Since 2007, China has launched six 25,000-ton LPDs, 17 7,000-plus-ton destroyers, one 13,000-ton cruiser and, of course, a new aircraft carrier. China's newest carrier, a half-sister to Lining and to the Russian Admiral Kuznetsov, will soon enter services, a mere five years after being laid down. A new carrier, of indigenous design and displacing 85,000 tons, has been under construction since 2016. In short, China has recent experience building large aviation warships, while Russia has no experience building a surface ship larger than a destroyer since the end of the Cold War. Analysts are skeptical. According to CNA's Michael Kaufman, Russia has no practical need of a carrier, it is simply for symbolic purposes to project status. Its only practical mission is to sustain Russian naval aviation, that part of the service doesn't want to die so they need a carrier. If the carrier goes then the naval aviation goes. Dmitry Gorenberg makes a similar case. The Russian military leadership decided in recent years to focus its naval construction on smaller ships with more powerful armaments, rather than going for recreating the big blue water navy that the Soviet Union developed under Gorshkov. For China, the upsides would also be clear. The construction of a Russian carrier would further the development of infrastructure and human capital necessary to build future carriers. It would help cement the emerging Moscow-Beijing security relationship, and offer deeper insight into the proprietary technologies that Russia might wish to install on the carrier. It would give China greater administrative experience on the international warship building market. Even acquiring a ship of the Kuznetsov laning type, which China can obviously build, would be an improvement for Russia. The Russia selling armaments to China becomes, Russia buying armaments from China. Image shift to China. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe.